Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. We're going to speak a little bit today about all things new. How many like new things? How many like new things? You like a new car, a new house, new shoes, new wardrobe, new hairdo, new nails. We like everything new, right? Even, even the new has a smell to it, right? Hmm? And usually when the smell runs out, we're running to get something else new, right? To get that smell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lay your hand on the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you this morning to cultivate the ground of our hearts, Lord. Let the ground of our hearts be good ground in which the seed of your word can fall into, O oh God, and bear a harvest for your honor and for your glory. Let everything that is being said and shared here today, let it not fall on the wayside, O oh God, or among thorns, Lord, but let it fall into good ground so that we can reap the harvest that you have set us up to reap, Lord, for your glory and honor. And every early rise to say, Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 17. 5, 17. Amen. Therefore, are we there? If anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things have passed away. And behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings new life. Can I get an amen? amen. The word of God tells us, if anyone is in Christ. Amen. Anyone. What is anyone? Anyone. What is anyone? Anyone is anyone. Amen. And this is why I love the word of God. It doesn't say if the, the, the good person is in Christ or the perfect person is in Christ. Anyone is anyone. Is there any kind of label on anyone? No. No labels on anyone. The word of God says if anyone is in Christ, male, Female, young, old, black, white, amen? Woman, man, rich, poor, short, tall, rough around the edges, smooth around the edges, skinny, pleasantly plump. Anyone is anyone. Well-educated, not educated at all. Anyone is anyone. The gospel is for anyone. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know about you, but that just makes me want to shout. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for anyone who's willing to receive it. The word of God says, if anyone is in Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, anyone is anyone. No matter your story, anyone is anyone. So the word of God says, if anyone is in Christ, my God, in Christ, not in a church, but in Christ, grafted in, joined to him, has him as a savior in a relationship. Like the word of God says, he is the vine and we are the branches. As long as that branch is connected to the vine. That branch will always bear fruit. Amen? So if anyone is in Christ, which means in relationship. See, we got to get rid of the religion and pick up the relationship. Religion ain't going to get us nowhere. Religion will actually make us lose out on a genuine relationship with Christ. Amen? If anyone is in Christ... Accepting his finished work of the cross in a relationship with Jesus Christ. They are a new creature. Look at your neighbor and say, a new creature. 
Come on, a new creature. Let them know I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. You have no idea who you're sitting next to. You have no idea my history. If I were to sit down and let you know my history, you would move seats right about now. But I am a new creature in Christ. Thank God for the finished work of the cross. I'm telling you right now, you would not find Pastor Liz up on an altar preaching today if it was the old Liz. Hey. Anyone who is in Christ, I found Christ. I found him. And when he came to me, I embraced him. And I grew in him. I was grafted into him. I became one with him. That's why whatever belongs to him belongs to me as well. Come on, I've been grafted in. We become new creatures, reborn, glory to God, reborn, born again, like many say, amen, not of the flesh, but of the spirit, amen, renewed by the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm telling you, what a marvelous work it is when God begins to work in us and begins to change us and begins to, to do things in us that we couldn't do on our own accord. There's something that takes place when we find ourselves in Christ, in Jesus. Not in the temple of restoration, but in Jesus. Because there are folks that come even here that are not in Christ yet. Hmm. Amen. The, the Bible says if anyone is in him, he is a new creature. Old things. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, old things have passed away. Old things have deteriorated. Little by little, old things are deteriorating. Your morals before you came to know Christ has changed. Come on. Your spiritual view of things has changed. Morally and spiritually speaking, there's got to be a change in you. If you look at yourself today, 20 years after you've accepted Jesus, and you still don't see a change between who you are today and who you were 20 years ago, then you got to check that relationship. You got to check that walk because there's surely something wrong there. And I'm here to tell you that it ain't wrong with God. It's wrong with us. Amen? So our previous ways, our, our thinking, our behaving, our attitudes, our words, our character, our mannerism has changed. It's got to change. You are a new creature. What does new mean? New is new. New is not old. You can't take something old and refurnish it and say it's new. It's still not new no matter how much you try to refurnish it. It's just refurnished, repolished, touched up a little bit. But when it's new, it's coming from the factory, new. It's never been used. It's new. Amen? We are a new creature. Old things have passed away. The way you used to think. How many of you can look at yourself now when you are surprised that you don't knock somebody out when they say something to you because had it been the old person they would have been down on the ground come on you can testify in the church sometimes you got to deal with people you got to tell them you're so lucky that the old one has passed away and the new one is here now because if the old was here you're going to go looking for your teeth about five miles away, yes or no? Come on. Any real people in the church? How many before you found Jesus, you had a very strong character? Come on, the Peters in the church. You, they couldn't look at you funny, you know? Yeah? They look at you, you, what you looking at? And then sometimes we argue with people who used to be just like us. Huh? Isn't, isn't, isn't it true? You argue with people, but whoa, they're just so nasty. And then the Holy Spirit come and say, but that's how you were too. 
before I got a hold of you and changed you. You're still on the potter's wheel, girl. I'm still spinning you around. You ain't getting off that thing no time soon. <laughs> but the word of God says that if anyone is in Christ, and I want to focus on something, church, in Christ, that's powerful. Relationship. You cannot have a relationship with visitation rights. A relationship is living with the person. You got to know the person, talk to the person, have dialogue with the person in order for the relationship to become stronger and you get to know each other better, yes or no? So the Word of God says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. Look at your neighbor and say, you're sitting next to a new woman or a new man. New things have come. New things have surfaced in our life due to being in Christ. New attitudes. New ways of behaving. We don't roll the head as much anymore like we used to. We're still working on it. The roll has gone halfway now instead of all the way. Hmm? That's why you go less to the chiropractor. There's less to be cracked. <laughs> yes? You still live in the chiropractor, cracking and putting a lining, everything back together because of all the rolling of the heads that we used to give people. Hmm? New things have surfaced. When somebody hurts you, it's no longer your flesh dealing with the situation when you're in Christ. Now it's the Spirit of God in you, through you, dealing with the situation that is before you. Yes or no? When you've been betrayed, it's no longer your flesh wanting to get back. It's you allowing the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, I'm telling you, when you are in Christ, it's such an awesome thing, early rising. Because when you are in Christ and he's in you, you hear him speak to you. You hear him. See, I got to be careful when I say that people think you're going crazy when I say I hear God speaking to me. No, I hear God speaking to me. Sometimes when I'm about to lose it, you know, those moments when you step back and you say, Holy Spirit, excuse me. Just one second, one little second. The Holy Spirit says, no, don't even bother. How many of you heard him tell you that? Don't even bother. How many of you heard him tell you, just walk away? How many of you have heard, how many of you have heard him tell you, don't even answer, it's not worth it? How many of you heard him tell you, listen, don't worry about it, just ignore it, walk away, let me deal with it? How many of you heard? So you're hearing him too, it's not just me. When you are in Christ, you are a new creature. People who knew you from before, will always have something to say because they're trying to understand the two different people they see now. Hmm? The new you versus the old you. Hmm? When you are in Christ, you know that at the end of every situation in your life, God's got to get the glory. God's got to get the glory. And when you are in Christ and you are so deep in Christ, you also know that no matter what you may be going through, God got you. And when God got you, God will take care of you. God will watch over you. God will give you victory no matter who may agree with it or not. You're in Christ. You become a new creature. Old things have passed away. New things has taken place. And as you pro, 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 progress in your walk with God, as you progress in your relationship with God, the more things will change about you. He will change the way you see things. He will change the way you act and react. He will change even the way you perceive certain situations. Amen? We're going to talk today about Eminem. Amen? We're going to talk today about Eminem. Amen. Not the rapper. I'm not talking about the rapper Eminem. I'm talking about Eminem in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. We cannot, repeat cannot, 
You know what? Repeat, I cannot remain the same if I'm new in Christ. I cannot remain the same if I'm new in Christ. Listen to me, church. Every single one in the Word of God and in today, 2020, anyone who has come into an encounter with Jesus Christ, I'm talking about a real encounter. I'm not talking about an encounter with the church. Come on, let's differentiate the two things. Because there are many people who have had encounters with the church but have yet to have an encounter with Christ. Amen? Amen. They like the church. They feel good in the church. When they come in the church, they feel okay. But when they leave, they go back to the same thing. But when you have an encounter with Christ, your life changes. Things change in your life. There is no way, early riser, that we can have a real encounter with Jesus Christ and nothing change in our life. It is absolutely impossible. If nothing has changed, then we didn't have a real encounter with Jesus Christ. We had an encounter with the pastor, with the bishop, with the first lady, with the deacon, with the church. But we never had an encounter with Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, it's time to wake up. Because the days that we're living in, I already said it, I'm going to say it again. It's a matter of time. Before you hear that trumpet sound. And it's not your encounter with Bishop Angelo Barboza that's going to get you through the pearly gates. Neither with Pastor Elizabeth Barboza or, or Pastor James or Pastor John or Pastor Grace or Pastor Dion or, or Bishop Anthony or Bishop Frank. But only an encounter with Jesus Christ. When he looks at you, he's got to see the seal of the Holy Spirit. He's going to scan you before you pass through those pearly gates. When you got the seal of the Holy Spirit in you, you'll be able to go on in. But if you got just a stamp from a church, you ain't going to get through those pearly gates. It's got to be embedded in you. The Spirit of God has got to be embedded in you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? So M&M, &M, amen? We're going to talk about two people in the Bible quickly that went through a process, because I want you to understand, church, you don't accept Jesus Christ today, and tomorrow you're already all together. It's a process. It takes time. Don't Listen, I don't believe none of those Christian folks who tell me that they came to church all demon-possessed one day, and the next day they were talking in tongues, and they were just so nice to everybody, and they, nothing bothered them anymore. They're floating on clouds. They ain't floating on no clouds, I'm telling you right now. I don't know what kind of clouds they're floating on, but it ain't reality. It's a process. It's something you, it's a relationship. It's something you work through daily. And as you surrender daily to God and you take in his word and you pray and you fast, you begin to deepen yourself in your relationship with God. It's a process. Amen. The first M from the M&M &M that we're talking about, a woman named Mary Magdalene. Amen? Mary of Magdala. Magdalene was not her last name. They just said that because she came from the city of Magdala. But she was a woman who came to know Jesus at her lowest. Amen? Do you believe me? Let's go to Mark quickly. The Gospel of Mark. I got 15 minutes. But we can do this. If you're taking notes, you can take notes. Mark 16, 9, Luke 8, 1 through 3, and John 20, 1 through 2. But right now, let's just go to Mark 16. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, there's got to be a change. There's got to be some kind of change. Mark 16, Nine. Now Jesus, having risen from the dead, early on the very first day of the week, appeared first, appeared first, appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Now listen to this church. When Mary Magdalene came to where Jesus was for the first time, and Jesus delivered this woman from the oppression that she was under. Her life was never the same. 
Her life took a 360. Amen? And she walked with him. And she learned more from him. And she surrendered to him. This is one of an example in the Bible. When you come into an, an encounter with Jesus, your life cannot remain the same. There's got to be a shift taking place in your life. She was a woman who was oppressed, but now she was enlightened. She was broken, but now she's whole. She was alone, but now she's accompanied, and she'll never be alone again. Amen? She was a woman who was tormented, but now she was peaceful. Come on. She was rejected, but now she was accepted. She was messed up, and now she was polished and put in order by the hand of the master. Hallelujah. She was lost, but now she was found. How many of you have been there? How many of you have been in a lost place until Jesus found you? Come on, can we just say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord, for finding me. Thank you, Lord, for calling me. Thank you, Lord. For your grace on me. Hallelujah. She was afraid, but now she was a courageous woman. She was hated, but now she was loved by the beloved. I'm telling you, when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, your life can never remain the same. I want you to look back at how your life was before you gave your life over to Jesus. I want you to take this time and just look back. If you got to close your eyes, close your eyes a little bit and try to remember of who you used to be. Hmm. And now look at you and where you are today. There's got to be a shift. Amen. This woman knew what it was to be oppressed. Knew what it was to be alone, to be rejected, to be hated, to be scorned. But when Jesus, everybody else gave their backs to her, even the disciples would have given their backs to her had it not been Jesus right there when she came to him. The word of God says that Mary Magdalene, when she came into an encounter with Jesus, Jesus knew what she was going through, and he immediately cast out seven demons that were working in that woman's life. Seven demons. He knew what she was going through. And when she came into a contact with Jesus, her life changed. She knew she couldn't go back to the life that she lived. A new life. Listen to me. When Christ opens up an opportunity and a new light shines, you better walk through that door. When God gives you the opportunity for change, you got to embrace that change. And you got to walk through that door. Amen? We have... The example of Matthew, the tax collector, in the word of God. He's spoken of in Matthew 9, 9, Mark 2, 13. Amen. I'm going to go to Matthew 9 because I want to show you something there. Matthew 9, 9. Jesus went on from there and he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And I'm here to tell you today that some of y'all are sitting in booths that you don't belong in. Come on. The low self-esteem booth. The abuse booth. The rejection booth. And it's time for you to get up out of that booth and walk right out of that booth and follow Christ where he's leading you. Amen. The word of God says, and Jesus went on from there and he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and he followed him. And I'm here to tell you from the moment that Matthew had that encounter with Jesus, Matthew's life was never the same. Matthew was a man that was a thief. Do you understand why the other disciples had issues with Matthew being in their number? I can just imagine Peter talking to Jesus. Lord, can I have a word with you for one second? One second. Lord, you know what he does behind that booth, right? He's a tax collector. He's a traitor. He's a Jewish man robbing from Jewish people. 
Let me just clarify that to you, Jesus, in case you didn't know who you just called out of that booth. Why don't you leave him in that booth, Jesus? Can you imagine Peter having a talk with Jesus? Jesus, hold up, come. Because that man you just called over there and that man there, you see how none of our people like him? Lord, we're going to have issues with him. He can't be in our number. If you want to love him, Lord, love him from afar, but don't bring him into our number. Because we're going to have issues. We're going to butt heads. Can you imagine? And can you imagine Jesus' response to Peter? Peter, where did I find you? You smelly, fishy man. Hmm? Everybody has a story. Uh, listen, I don't care how nice you look up in the church. I don't, I don't care how well you speak, how eloquent your words are, that I got to go into dictionaries to try to figure out what you're saying because every other word is too big for me to understand. I don't care how long you've been in a church. You could have been birthed in your church. Hmm? But if God, listen to me, if God wants to use who he calls, he's going to use who he calls, no matter who wants it and who doesn't want it. You understand what I'm saying to you? The Bible says that Matthew was minding his business behind the booth, collecting taxes, treating the people. But when Jesus saw Matthew, Jesus said, Matthew, let's go. Come on and follow me. The word of God says that Matthew did not stop for one second to calculate. Because he was a tax collector. He was an accountant. He knew numbers. I'm leaving all of this here to follow a man in the desert. To follow a man who has no home. To follow a man who doesn't even know where his next meal is coming from. It took Matthew courage. To let go of the lifestyle he had to follow Jesus. Come on. Matthew was hated by his own people. He was a traitor to his own people. He was a man that lived very much alone. But now with the encounter of Jesus in his life, Matthew's life changed. It wasn't so easy for Matthew. He had to kind of work in the middle of the others. But he was, at least he wasn't as bad as Judas. Matthew stole from the people. Judah stole from Jesus' treasury. <laughs> I'll let you figure that one out after. Amen. Matthew was a man that was shunned, but now he was accepted by the Lord. You know that a lot of the times when you see people going through hell and almost acting out hellish, it's a cry for help. A lot of the times people that you see that are acting out crazy, like they're losing it, what they're really doing is crying out for help. They want something and they don't know what that something is. But I'm here to tell you, we all know what that something is. That something is nothing less than Jesus Christ himself. That's what the world is hungry for. That's what the world is in need of. And who is God going to use to bring that? We, who've had an encounter with Jesus, who are in Christ. Amen? Matthew was a man who was disrespected, but now he was respected. He was a man that was dishonored, now a man that lived honorably. There's got to be a shift. There's got to be a change. You are a new creature. Old things have passed away. New things have taken place. Amen? He was a liar. Now he was a truth teller. Because you can't walk with the truth and not express the truth. You can't walk with the truth and still live in a lie. If you're walking with the truth and you're still living lies, then something's wrong with that walk. Amen? We need to take a look at ourselves and ask ourselves, do I see change in my life? Do I see a change in my life? When I look back at how I used to be, do I see two different people? Because you ought to see two different people. Amen? 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 And we're going to close with this. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's visit prophet Isaiah here. Isaiah 43. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, there's got to be a change. There's got to be a change. 
Isaiah 43, 18 says, Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. I am about to do a new thing. God says, I am about to do a new thing. Come on now. I am about to do a new thing. Those that are ready will receive it. Those that are not ready will going to lose the opportunity. But I'm here to prophetically declare over your life that God is about to do a new thing in your life. And you got to get yourself ready to receive what God is about to flow into your life. You got to be ready. Lord, I'm ready. Whatever it is, here I am. Use me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Do it, Lord. God says, I'm about to do a new thing. Hallelujah. Listen carefully. Look what the word of God says to the prophet Isaiah. God said to his people, listen carefully. Give me your attention. Oh, heed to me because I'm about to do a new thing. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's about to do a new thing in me. He's about to do a new thing in me. I'm telling you, you can feel it in the atmosphere. All the, all the tightness in the atmosphere. All the hate in the atmosphere. All the division in the atmosphere. There's something that's about to break loose in the life of those that live for God. And you're about to do something new in your life. God is about to work something in you. And you got to position yourself for what God is about to do. You got to say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but here I am. Do it, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Lord, use me, Lord. I am here for such a time as this. You put me here. You position me here. Do it, Lord. Come on. I'm about to do a new thing. Look at your neighbor and say, he's about to do a new thing. He's about to do a new thing. He's about to do a new thing. Forget what's behind you. Forget what you went through. Forget the pain. Forget the rejection. Forget the misunderstanding. Forget the arguments. Forget that divorce. Forget that separation. He's about to do a new thing. He's about to do a new thing. Don't you feel it in the atmosphere? He's about to do a... Come on. He's about to do a new thing. Come on. If they don't want to tell you, you speak to yourself. Sometimes you just got to, you know, you got to talk to yourself. Self, he's about to do a new thing. Position yourself, self. Come on. Get ready, Liz. He's about to do something big. Oh, you haven't gone through all the hell that you went through for nothing. God has positioned you in a place for such a time as this. He's about to do something new in you. Something new through you. Something new around you. He's going to use you to do something new. Hello. Hello, somebody. Hello, church. Hello, people of God. Hello, early risers. Come on. He's about to do a new thing. I don't know what it is, but I'm here to tell you that I'm ready to walk in it, whatever it may be. Oh, God, do it in me. Do it through me. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, here I am, here I am, here I am. Uh, come on, I want you to just start walking a little bit and say, I'm going to walk in it. He's about to do something new in my life. He's directing me somewhere new. He's doing something new, and I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, church. Do you feel it in the atmosphere? Can you feel it in the atmosphere? Something's about to break loose. Something's about to fall. Something's about to be loosened in your life. And you got to be ready to walk in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh. Come on. Do not remember the former things, Tiffany. Do not remember what you've been through, Tiffany. Because what I'm about to do in you, I'm going to make you forget everything that you went through. Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Oh, you thought you lost. No, you didn't lose. I just let it go because they couldn't follow you to the next place that I'm taking you. Some of you, you lost friends along the way. Come on now. When you got engrafted into Jesus, you lost some friends. But I'm here to tell you today, you didn't lose no friends. You lost enemies. You didn't lose no friends. You lost fake people who are just attached to you to suck the energy out of you. God is about to do something new and you got to position yourself. You got to position
blemish in yourself. God said, do not remember the former things. Forget about him. Forget about her. If you keep your mind on them, I can't take you where I want to take you. You got to forget about what he did to you. Forget what she did to you. Keep your eye on me. I'm about to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you early risers that there are some of you uh, in the last month or so, uh, you've been going through hell and hot water. You have felt the, 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 you felt the, 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 the heat of the enemy all around you. I'm here to tell you that that's a sign from God that he's about to do something big. Look at your neighbor and say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't let go, don't let go, don't let go, don't let go. Hold on, he's about to do something new. Hallelujah. Some of y'all have been through hell and hot water. This last month to a month and a half, you know who you are. Oh, you've been feeling the attacks. You've been feeling the enemy all around you. Sometimes you get uncomfortable where you are. And God is telling you, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Forget the things that are behind you. Keep your eyes fixed on where I'm taking you. No eye has seen. No ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him and for those who are in him hallelujah 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 come on say he's changing my story he's changing my story oh, I'm here to tell you you might have a story change but God is already messing with the last chapter in your life and he's already added in a whole bunch of things in that chapter he's taking things out and he's put things in because he's about to do a new thing and believe you me remember this Sunday because when he begins doing it I want you coming back to me and saying you said it 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 that Sunday the Spirit of God spoke to you that Sunday oh I'm getting ready to do a new thing and a new thing is a new thing no eye has seen no air has heard you don't know where God's taking you. You don't know where God's taking you. You don't know where God's taking you. But I'm here to tell you, the devil knows, and that's why he's after you. That's why he's attacking you. That's why he's trying to hinder your progress. That's why he's trying to get your faith at a low level. But you got to let that devil know, not me, Satan. Not me, Satan. I know who I am. I know where I stand. I know in what relationship I'm in. I'm in Christ. I've been grafted in. Like it, who like it? Don't like it, who don't like you? And let me tell you something. Some of you, you are about to anger a whole lot of people. You're about to anger a whole mess of people. Get ready. I said get ready because what he's about to do in you, you're going to have people that be like, she thinks she is. There she go again. There you go again. Who he think he is. Come on, you gotta let them know. I'm gonna tell you who I know I am. I am a child of God. You don't know the hell I've been through. I can write a book with the hell that I've been through. You think my God gonna let me go through that hell for nothing? Oh, no, 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 no. No, honey. No, sugar. No, no, boo. No, no, no. God is getting ready to do something new. I feel it in the atmosphere. Everything that you've gone through has been nothing less than preparation ground for you. Come on. Everything that yeah. you've gone through has been nothing less than preparation ground for you. That's all it's been. Hallelujah. He's changing my story. He's changing my story. You gotta believe in yourself enough to know that God is changing your story. That he cares so much about you that he's 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 in there working in your story. Come on, he's working in me. Something. I, 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 let me let me let me let me. There is a shifting going on in the spiritual realm. Yes. And those who are connected will listen to me. 
those who are connected to that shifting that's taking place right now. You, you, you say, oh, oh, hell is breaking loose. Listen to the Spirit of God. There is a shifting going on. There are angels that have been positioned in certain places just holding their shield back. The time is coming. God is getting ready to do something new in your life. Forget what you've been through. Forget the pain no matter how hard it may be. Because what God is about to do in you, it will overflow. And it will cause you to forget all that pain. Just like a woman who just gives birth. She could be in labor pain for 20 hours, 28 hours, 36 hours. Pain, excruciating pain. And all she's remembering is pain, 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 pain. But when she pushes through that pain, when the doctor said, come on, girl, you can do it another push. Give me a push. Give me a push. And when she pushes that child out, all of a sudden, the joy of having that child takes away the remembrance of the pain. And this is what God is getting ready to do in some of y'all here today. This is what God is getting ready to do in some. I'm not talking to everybody, but I am talking to somebody. I ain't talking to everybody, but I am talking to somebody. I'm not talking to everybody, but I am talking to somebody. Say, here I am, Lord. Come on, say, here I am, Lord. Say, Jesus, do it. Come on, just, just lift your hand. Say, Jesus, do it. Jesus, do it. Do it in me, Lord. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Just do it, Lord. Just do it, Lord. Just do it, Lord. Just do it, Lord. I'm ready, Lord. Just do it, Lord. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Do not remember the former things. Neither ponder on the things of the past. Why she do that to me? Why did I go through that? Do not remember the former things, saith the Lord. Neither ponder the things of your past. But listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm here to tell you, you're, listen to me, your thirst is over. Your hunger is over. Your thirst is over. Your hunger is over. God is about to pour out rivers in your life and cause rivers to come out of you. You will be the very thing that God will use to cause others to drink. From that living one, I'm telling you, God is about to do something big in you. I want you to position yourself. You didn't go through all that hell for nothing. You didn't go through all that hell for nothing. You didn't go through all that hell for nothing. You know who I'm talking to. You know who you are. You didn't go through that hell for nothing. I'm gonna pray for you. I want you to bow your head right there where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I prophetically declare here today, Lord, that this person that is under the sound of my voice, that has been going through hell and hot water, you are about to do something new. Position your people right now, even now, Lord, even now, even now, even now, Lord. Help your people to position themselves, oh God, in a place in which your blessings will flow, your breakthroughs will flow, the miracle will flow, the testimony will flow. You see, oh God, God is saying here today, that miracle I'm about to pour in your life, it ain't even about you. It's not even about you. It's about others that are next to you that you're not even aware of. What I'm about to do in your life, it's not even really about you. You're just the person that I'm going to use to bring forth that breakthrough. But it's about those around you. It's about your household. It's about your workplace. It's about your neighbors. It's about your church. It's about the members. It's about the deacons. It's about the deaconess. Listen, God is about to do something big in your life. 
position yourself. My God. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. El Shaddai, Almighty God. My God, my God, my God. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We position ourselves this morning, Lord. Whatever it is that is working against your people, trying to turn their focus around, trying to distract their faith, trying to distract their focus, trying to keep them focused on the things of the past and the things that are behind them, oh God. Lord, we break every distracting spirit this morning, oh God. We bind every demon of distraction. We bind every demon of fear, of doubt, of insecurity, oh God. For what you're about to do, oh God, break forth in the life of your people, oh God. Break forth in their life, oh God. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. And help us to understand that while you're doing it, we will not get the approval of everybody. But that's all right. Because what you're doing, you're being done. It's being done by your hand, oh God. By your hand. And when your hand moves, nobody can stop it, oh God. No one can stop it, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I pray for every early riser this morning, Lord. Those who are positioning themselves to get ready to receive the new thing that you're doing in their life, oh God. Blow, oh God, with the breath of power and anointing. Blow, oh God, with your breath of anointing, with your breath of revelation, oh God. Oh God, let a spiritual revival take place in the heart and soul of this early riser. Oh God, let this early riser, my God, be so full of your power and your glory, oh God, that sitting next to somebody, that they'll be able to pass on the glory of God. Use this early riser. Feel this early riser. Let it overflow in this early riser, my God. Let it flow in the life of this early riser, Lord. Every early riser with your hands lifted up to the Lord. Say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I position myself, Lord, for a new thing. A new thing. Your new thing. Here I am, Lord. Just do it in me, Lord. Do it in my life. Do it in me, Lord. Do it through me, Lord. Here I am as I am. In Jesus' name, and every early riser say, Amen and Amen, Amen.